Hello and welcome back. If you have any small children, have them leave the room because today we are going to be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series by going back and uh, talking about an updated spreadsheet. That's right, the spreadsheet. It's not for children. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at uh, the various changes that have been made and also talking about some like underlying or not underlying, but uh, updated philosophy regarding the spreadsheet. And so we're just going to get into it with our Victoria beats going in the background. So um, just kind of talking through uh, the spreadsheet in particular and how we're interpreting this um, we have uh, you know three values over here the input the output and the net and what we have is for the input values for all of these um, this is the value of all of the input goods uh, multiplied by uh, their base prices uh, and also and so that's it output we have the base value uh, multiplied by the quantity of all the goods and net is of course uh, the output minus the input so simple enough um, however we will often have you know expensive prices and cheap prices and so it's not necessarily going to be this is how much this building gets you uh, but it is just kind of a heuristic for interpreting buildings so for example agriculture generally speaking ooh, don't want to look at that yet uh, agriculture generally speaking will have pretty wide uh, pretty big nets uh, but this net is not necessarily indicative of that it's going to be super profitable because agriculture prices tend to get depressed over time okay so um, that's kind of thing one. Uh, thing two uh, is going to be uh, construction, uh, how much construction uh, it takes to get an uh, investment pool. Um, this is kind of what I think is the most important thing. I was really bullish on it several months ago. And I think it's come down for me in terms of importance. But what this value indicates is it's taking a look at the net. And then it's taking a look at how much construction is required to build the building. And based on these values, it is telling you how much investment pool you are going to get per construction. Uh, now... I think that this is really important in the early game uh, when you are sub like 500, 600 million GDP, uh, how much uh, you are getting per construction on into your investment pool is particularly important and just jumping back into the game. The main reason why this is important uh, is taking a look at uh, the industrialists. Often you will have them powerful and happy and you will be getting investment pool contribution efficiency bonus. 20% is always taken from them uh, and uh, put into the investment pool for the capitalists. Uh, but this modifier adds free money to the economy and I think it's a great source of money and also the investment pool contribution it is kind of hard to extract money from your pops early on and this investment pool transfer which will pay for construction goods is very very useful in this regard and that's why I think that's kind of the most important thing and the big thing you will notice is that uh, kind of jumping back into the spreadsheet is if we take a look at anything that is owned by capitalists it will tend to have really much higher construction efficiency per uh, investment pool or investment pool per construction and the reason for this is because it's owned by capitalists instead of um, you know uh, what is it the aristocrats which will only contribute 10% of their income per construction relative to the capitalists so I think this is kind of the most important column in the early game economy however something that I didn't value as much uh, before was the net output per construction and this is how much your GDP gets boosted um, per uh, per construction and so this is investment pool this is GDP and so uh, with this, uh, I think that, um, you know, the fact that you're getting minting off of GDP and also uh, with Mappy, with the local goods price changes in 1.5 specifically, jumping back into the game, it will be harder to have uh, bigger margins. So what the local goods price does is it will always influence price in a negative way. And what you will get is you will get local prices that are often depressed uh, towards plus 75 or minus 75 or it, it's always unfavorable. So, for example, we have a glut of sulfur here in Saxony we are producing way 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 more sulfur and so what this means is the price is uh, depressed because it's influenced by local price uh, via the market access price impact modifier or MAPI um, so if we take a look in Saxony in particular in the buildings uh, the price is pulled down and this means that the sulfur mines which we have way more sell orders in this province than buy orders of sulfur these sulfur mines are less profitable because this price is is getting pulled down uh, by the mappy and so what this means is there's a smaller weekly balance now the weekly balance still here is huge because uh, the PM for sulfur is very efficient and also you know we have a like a large enough price that it's good enough but 
just wanted to emphasize that this is uh, going to, the fact that um, you're going to generally have decreased dividends uh, is going to make investment pool worse as a, as a thing we're paying attention to in 1.5, although I still think it's incredibly important. And so uh, net construction or just how much, uh, you know, output you're creating, I think is also really important. After you get past like 800 million GDP, you start to care about this more than the other more than the construction uh into the investment pool or how much investment pool you're getting per construction you start to care more about how much gdp you're getting per construction because generally this is a little bit more um stimulus oriented however this will tend to uh having a really big net uh actually we'll talk about that later so the third thing uh, kind of feature we're looking at that we did not look at too much before is how many buy orders uh, are created per construction in general, if you can have your uh, all of the prices in your market be plus 75 or minus 75, both of these are, by the way, uh, inefficient. But if you can have them be one or the other, you'd rather have the prices be higher. What buy uh, demand per efficiency is creating is it's creating more buy orders in the market, which can help to stimulate economies. Now, uh, pops will also stimulate the economy by buying consumer goods, but generally speaking, you can get better efficiency. Uh, the consumer goods in general will have less efficiency. Uh, they won't be all that efficient uh, relative to, you know, a resource good. Uh, and so what you often want to do is uh, stimulate the resource economies or stimulate the agricultural, like uh, stuff like cotton and these sorts of things with additional buy orders. And this will allow you to maintain a high price of stuff like iron and uh, sulfur, which are very, very, very efficient here. You know, the sulfur is very efficient. And so uh, you do care about how many buy orders you're creating and not just net efficiency, uh, but uh, you know, these buy orders in a sense stimulate the economy and push prices up, which is a positive thing. Um, but in the abstract, you want your prices to be roughly even with some asterisks, but we're not gonna get into that. And finally, uh, I have this column for Mappy Sensitivity. There's nothing in it yet. I'm trying to figure out uh, the best way for us to do this or handle this. Uh, but what we are going to kind of use instead is efficiency here. And this efficiency, often I, I use the word inefficiency or efficiency interchangeably now, and maybe I need to update my language. Uh, but efficiency is going to be uh, the output uh, divided by the input here, if I recall correctly. This is how we are getting the efficiency here. It's gonna be output divided by the input. And so um, we will, the first thing, it, the reason why this has to do with Mappy sensitivity is because if you have, uh, Mappy is going to pu pull the input prices up and it's gonna pull the output prices down. If we have something with really, really high efficiency, this affects us less. If we, if the price um, relative to market price gets pulled up like 50% on sawmills and the output gets pulled down 50%, we would still be, you know, uh, have an input of 250 and an output of 600 and we would still have a positive net and this net could be used to employ pops in the building and this sort of thing. If we come over and we look at industrial goods, if we had, uh, you know, a 50% increase in the pr uh, inputs required for steel and a 50% decrease, uh, then we would have input prices of 2400 output uh, value of 1600 and it wouldn't be able to hire a single person and so with the more you have efficiency or the lower your efficiency is here the greater the negative effects of uh, a really uh, nasty mappy modifier will be and the more localized your economies have to be this wasn't something we cared about before uh as too much but now it's something we really care about which is um also to say or just kind of point this out this is also one of the reasons why you can never get steel prices super depressed because steel is not hyper efficient and so if the steel output price ever comes down really really low you know if you get a minus 30 percent steel price or minus, let's call it minus 33% steel price, uh, and an even price on the inputs of steel, it will be unprofitable. It won't be able to employ. So you hit equilibrium employment on steel mills faster. 
what equilibrium employment is is when you can't afford to hire up new people uh, even if you have available labor because uh, the building isn't making enough money and so this is uh, you know kind of the third uh, another thing that we're going to be like focused on when evaluating like uh, our various uh, sorts of uh, buildings uh, in general although we won't go too too deep on that I think it's worth kind of mentioning generally speaking industrial uh, stuff will have worse efficiency and agricultural stuff will have uh, agricultural and resource stuff will have much better efficiency and uh, the thing we are going to talk and what this will tend to do is this will tend to depress prices uh, because the uh, the, so if we take a look at, for example, cotton plantations, we see that it has an efficiency of 667, right? Uh, this means that you can get the price of cotton real, real low before you start hitting with equilibrium employment. And so what will tend to happen over the course of the game is the prices of cotton will get very, very depressed, which will make it so that it's not that profitable, right? And so if the prices are depressed, if cotton's minus 50%, um, then we start to like see a, a bit of a change here where the output Output is suddenly 1,000. Uh, the net is only 700, and suddenly these numbers look a lot worse. And this will tend to happen with the cotton over time. Um, but it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's going to be an input for other goods and sort of, you know, this sort of thing. And then we want something that creates buy demands for this. And so then it becomes better, even though it's like a less efficient industry, it becomes better to maybe build textile mills because these textile mills are going to create buy orders for the cotton, which we will buoy up the price and allow them both to be profitable simultaneously. And so this is kind of why this column is important. The buy demand efficiency is that it helps you to make other industries profitable. That might be hard to get profitable. The consumer goods, uh, if you, if you have here let's jump back into the game for a second if you have like let's say these sulfur mines or <clears throat> should we have sulfur mines as the example okay whatever the weekly balance is going to go in a few places right if we increase the price of these goods uh then what will happen through buy orders or buy demand if we increase the price of all of these goods then that'll stimulate all of these industries if we decrease the price of these goods um, then that will make the industries that are supporting these worse, but that will increase our weekly balance. If stuff is going to the weekly balance, it will get re-injected in the economy in terms of buy orders. And so this buy efficiency is not creating uh, necessarily velocity in the economy, but it's creating targeted velocity. It's creating targeted velocity towards stuff like the cotton plantations, which otherwise would not be as profitable, and especially the resource industry. So jumping back in here, uh, if we take a look at the buy demand, efficiency again uh, this is not creating uh, you know uh, buy demands will be will be coming out no matter what but what it does is it creates targeted buy demands and in the case of the textile mills this allows us to increase the price of you know cotton which allows the cotton to ca start being really profitable again and you notice it has a really big uh, net construction or uh, what is it uh, construction efficiency self uh, amount per 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 thing so I believe this is the net, uh, how this is calculated. Uh, it is uh, E4 over, yeah, it is the net over um, the uh, amount of construction. It was, so this 170 value is really high. And so this uh, it's not just that you are getting a profitable building in the textile mill, it's that you're facilitating this. Uh, and so you, you kind of need to analyze stuff in a more holistic way uh, because uh, stuff that might look just absolutely insane, like, you know, the cotton plantations looks really good um, in some sense. And it really even gives like a decent amount of like construction efficiency, like, or or, sorry, it gives a decent amount of this is uh, when you before you have pump jacks and before you have uh, publicly traded on the uh, agriculture, um, it's giving eight cons uh, eight investment pool per construction. If we take a look at you know something like uh, uh, we have let's say iron mines here without. Uh, uh, happy without being on laissez-faire it's giving nine on atmospheric engine pump that's somewhat commensurate uh but what will happen is it'll be will depress the price of cotton more early on and so um iron mines are generally better also there's the ownership like aspect of uh depressing the landowners but this is kind of a separate consideration than what we're talking about okay so that's 
that's like kind of all the background information for understanding the spreadsheet and kind of evaluating things, which I thought was important to rehash um, quite a bit uh, because, uh, you know, things have come along since uh, we've discussed it before. And I used to be just like, this is the only thing that matters uh, for the most part. And now I think that it's, while this is the most important thing, uh, these other uh, columns are going to matter quite a lot, as well as efficiency now with the mapping. Okay, so let's jump into the changes. The biggest change is construction costs. Everything has gone up by at least 33% in terms of construction costs, which is going to lead to a huge slowdown of the economy. To some extent, this is offset by, you know, uh, our ability to use companies and get this 35% construction bonus. And currently, you can just swap around the companies as you choose and just have the bonus going all the time. Uh, I'm guessing they're going to nerf this. And so um, this means an overall slowdown of the economy as a result of increased construction prices. However, some things have increased in construction more than others. And uh, we will kind of dig into those when we look into a different uh, spreadsheet here. Uh, but just to be as an example, steel mills used to have 450 construction uh, and uh, they used to take 24 weeks and uh you know wood used to take eight weeks and it cost 150 construction and it used to be the case that uh the steel mills would take three times as long um a lot of these got kicked up to 600 construction and were also 450 kicked up to 600 but some of these suffered even more like the steel mills which are now from 450 uh to 800 construction so that's nearly an 80 percent increase in construction costs and so you see this with a lot of pms i've highlighted all the ones that went from 450 to 800 um you know uh in this uh in this spreadsheet uh but some of these have really suffered on that thing so this is the first thing to take in is that everything is less efficient than it was before but coming in and talking about the chop chops specifically uh they actually benefited a lot from uh the hardwood uh changes of two, two new pms so it used to be the case uh and i messed this one up when i was talking about it on stream as well as in my first pressure video it used to be the case that the net output uh would be even for hardwood and focused hardwood and you would not gain any extra efficiency up until the point you research the pneumatic tools uh, technology, which gives 25% hardwood output. Um, once you get this, then it was a positive because you'd be increasing the hardwood output. However, now uh, the PM is just straight up efficient. Uh, and so uh, what you have now is the chop chops are even better than they were before. However, uh, it is hard to create buy orders for hardwood that are local sometimes. And so you will have to find ways to create local buy orders of hardwood uh but this pm is just really really strong now and it's giving you a lot of value now instead of uh you know uh it you taking i think you used to get 20 hardwood in exchange for 40 so, uh softwood now you get 30 uh now you get 20 in exchange for 30 and you can even go up to um 40 hardwood in exchange for 50 which is even more efficient efficient proportionally and so chop chops are even better than before uh which is insane and uh you need to find ways to create by demand efficiency for hardwood in order to utilize this and so i think that you know you very often you will look at the pm for hardwood it won't be efficient and you'll be like well i just won't turn this on because it's not efficient because it's creating a glut of these resources and so you got to try and find uh places that are going to create by demand for this uh other than that the resources are just mainly eating the construction nerf there wasn't a huge change to the resources um so it's mainly just the chop chops for agriculture there's an elephant in the room and that is what they did with the rice farms uh they doubled the output of the rice farms they doubled the input of the rice farms but they don't, didn't double the construction costs. And now rice is the most efficient PM in the game uh, in terms of cell efficiency per construction. I believe the second most efficient is opium, uh, which is uh, almost half that, it's 220. Uh, rice is also in terms of efficiency per construction on cell efficiency as well as you know investment pool uh, is more than double the next most efficient grain. Uh, millet farms, uh, if doubled, would be 350. Rice was already better than millet. Uh, rice was already the best grain in the game and they just doubled it uh and so uh because the, your opportunity cost for constructing any building is just constructing another building the fact that construction wasn't doubled while everything else about the building was doubled makes it so you're effectively getting two buildings for the price of one so this is obscene and um 
it's just, uh, I can't imagine it stays in the game, but uh, as long as it does, this will be red highlighted because I can, this is the only red highlighted thing. This is just, this is just nuts. Um, it's giving, it's giving more capital, it's giving more investment pool than like anything else. Now, however, what will happen if you just build a ton of these is you will depress the price of uh, all of the outputs, which are sugar, fruit, and grain, you will depress them into oblivion. So you need to have commensurate uh, ways of developing buy orders for these things, whether it's pop consumption or this other sort of thing. You can't just create an economy entirely out of rice, we tried. Um, but it's still gonna, it's still just like wildly efficient and uh, as far as any of your grain strategy should go, uh, whatever your strategy is, uh, if you're trying to play like optimally or something resembling optimal, uh, you should not ever produce a rye farm, a wheat farm, a maize farm, or a millet farm now. You should just only produce rice farms. On top of all this, they're more slot efficient as well, because they still only take up one arable land, uh, which I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with the construction cost. Uh, if you want to say that rice, uh, you know, takes up less slots, uh, this is fine with me, but the construction's not. This is out of line. Um, also, uh, millet was like the next best. And on all of these grains, we see the deletion of all the vineyard uh, PMs. And instead we have the vineyards, which is just a very standard looking thing. Uh, just to briefly touch on something, uh, Rayon is an inefficient PM. It's one of the very few inefficient PMs, although we've got some new ones. Uh, and then cotton plantations is better than it looks because this does not take into account the 25% throughput you get off of cotton gin. And so it will be even better than this. And so all other things equal, you know, cotton and opium specifically are kind of the best ones, uh, but you will often create a lot of buy orders for dyes and silks which will make these good and if you're creating like enough consumption you will create uh you know buy orders for various other ones as well however uh in the light of uh the rice farms being okay i think sugar is particularly bad now uh because you would rather just be acquiring as much sugar as possible from your rice farms something like this uh you want your buy orders for whatever you're using the sugar for to buy whether it's pop consumption or groceries um you want them to buy from the rice farms instead of and buoy up the profitability of the rice farms so you can build more of these and have them still be profitable because if these prices are minus 75 percent right if the outputs are minus 75 percent uh then it's barely has a positive net but it still has a positive net if it's minus 75 and just even price on the inputs you will have 2500 as your output and so suddenly it doesn't look so good anymore but little bit of a digression there that is kind of the changes in the agriculture uh let's look at industrial goods where we're starting to see a lot of changes the big one is the the nerfed construction uh you know in particular on the steel mills the motor industries and also the railroads which aren't on this tab um so this is the big one um notably i just wanted to talk about there's a huge amount of input amounts on electric arc process and they're creating a lot of buy orders. So even though steel like looks like a terrible PM, like if you look at it, the construction, how much investment pool you're getting per construction or output per construction, it doesn't look like a lot, but what it's going to do is it's going to help you keep the prices of, uh, you know, uh, the iron high. And it's also going to let you use better PMs elsewhere, obviously, because steel is going to be an input. So it's not that steel is a terrible industry, but you just have to keep in mind that, you know, it has a very low efficiency score um, you know there's a ton of input goods and a ton of output goods and the efficiency is going to make it so that it's very sensitive to mappy so you are almost certainly going to want to have your steel mills um, you're gonna want to have the steel mills the buy orders for the steel in the same state as the steel mills themselves right which means you're probably going to, want to have the tooling workshop in the same state as the steel mills now the tools go into a whole bunch of stuff for example like agriculture like the wheat farms or you're not building reap farms you're building rice farms but it's going to go into like labor saving pms which like uh getting going on to harvesting tools for these um for example and uh so you don't really care because if we look at the efficiency of the rice it's hugely efficient. It has a really, really high uh, efficiency score. And so what this is going to mean is that we can tolerate having more expensive inputs. And so you're going to want all your all of this stuff more vertically built because it has low on this efficiency score. You cannot tolerate having uh, both increased in, uh, inputs and depressed outputs, or you would prefer not to. Also, this is gonna make states 
with uh, both iron and coal extremely strong uh, because it's going to allow the steel to have good margins that allows it to employ up and it's going to also make the steel or sorry the iron and the uh so uh coal extremely profitable as well because they won't hemorrhage stuff and if you look at these these pms look better in terms of net output per construction and like uh investment pool per construction and so this is going to be how we're kind of like unpacking this idea of steel it's not necessarily bad it just needs support but simultaneously it adds support to its inputs um, notably it's hard to create this sort of support for stuff like grain uh and a lot of the other uh you know agricultural stuff Stuff, and so this is kind of why a lot of this falls up uh, falls off and has really depressed prices okay uh, motor industries we saw automobiles and uh, the changes they made to the substitutes for automobiles uh, which I believe both transportation and services substitute um, the change they made it so there's a way less of those goods which makes it so as far as uh, I know uh, the substitution doesn't work I, in my opinion how it should it's not based on price it's based on the amount in the market since there's way less services and uh, transportation in the market this makes it so pops actually consume a decent amount of automobiles we are cons uh, building or putting a ton of automobiles into the market they're still profitable and so a big change here in 1.5 is you can actually use this pm on more than one state uh, before you used to just put autos on just one state now you can put it in a whole bunch of different states and it's going to produce buildings and while the uh you know extra efficiency is not tremendously high uh it is going to be nice now uh it is uh not that there's the marginal net per oil is not particularly high is maybe something to consider and maybe this pm is not even worth using anyways i think i'll need to experiment a lot more with this it does just add a lot of input costs so if you specifically want to increase the price of your oil so that your oil can be more profitable like if the oil prices are depressed oil pms are just very efficient in general and so you would prefer to be able to expand your oil all the way out and so if it might be the case that you are using at some phase of the game these motor industries uh so that you can expand the oil out but glassworks this hardware plastics is generally more efficient per oil you're getting more net goods per oil and so it's going to be preferable to use hardware plastics in the long run uh, but there might be a place for automobiles also the automobiles prices if they're plus 75 right if the output is plus 75 suddenly this looks a little bit different and suddenly this looks a lot more efficient right um so it might be the case that if, when automobile prices get high enough it becomes a worthwhile use of your oil uh, especially in you know heavy metropolitan areas um next up we want to talk about the glassworks uh glassworks got way 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 stronger um but uh, this might just be stronger on paper. Uh, we don't have uh, the, the, the thing here. Let's actually just get that ready. Okay, we just needed to get our handy dandy needs uh, sheet in. And so uh, here we have, uh, you know, luxury goods, luxury items are substitutes. There's a max you can consume of any single one is 50%. Uh, and so uh, this is kind of something that needs to be taken into appreciation when we're talking about glass because a big part of it's uh looking really really good is the fact that it's producing porcelain coming back into the glass um it's the pm without the glass is like plus 19 is kind of whatever it seems to me that you absolutely with bone china while this pm looks incredibly efficient relative to you know the other consumer goods 22 23 uh 22 these types of things while it looks extraordinarily efficient i believe it depresses the price uh of you know porcelain so much that it starts looking less efficient and it will also make it so your pops uh universally consume they're going to cap out at 50 percent porcelain and then they're not going to then they're going to consume at least 10 percent of these other two and maybe some radios uh but i i think that this pm is a little bit overtuned uh in terms it, it's not as good as it looks because you're going to depress the price of porcelain and your pops won't even be able to consume enough porcelain to make it work however um this might make the yeah, so I, I think that we'll, we'll enter a situation. What they did with a lot of these PMs is they just, like, uh, enormously increased the output of the luxury items on them, on all the luxury PMs. And uh, since you build a lot of glass for other stuff anyways, although there's less demand for it, we'll talk about that later, uh, I think that you're just going to flood the market uh, and it's not going to be quite as good as it looks. However, it's going to be probably pretty strong early on uh, for the glassworks. And so glassworks might be 
um, you know, uh, I believe you're going to want to build multiple uh, consumer good PMs uh, rather than pushing up to 21 because of partially because of Mappy uh, and also partially because, yeah, I mean, it's mainly because of Mappy. Uh, but I think that these will, uh, these aren't going to be as good as they look. But they still look really good, and it might be the very best uh, consumer goods PM, and then on top of that. But you do need to have uh, sufficient demand for glass. It's not creating just consumer goods, it's just incidental luxury goods. Um, but I will see how this shakes out. And it might be the case that you are using, uh, you're bifurcating and splitting these a lot, where you're going to have bone china in some places and not in others. Um, other than that, uh, let's kind of scroll through. They bifurcated fertilizer plants and boom booms, which is absolutely fantastic for profitability of both these buildings. However, uh, I believe the fertilizer plants before only cost six, uh, 450. So I believe this is uh, an instance of the good old uh, extra juice increased uh, cost. Uh, these PMs don't look super efficient. However, uh, just to point out, brine electrolysis and vacuum evaporation, these PMs consume an absolute enormous amount uh, of goods and will help to increase the price of all of your mining which allows you to mine more and have it be profitable and it also feeds into the mine so it's going to have nice loops nice feedback loops and chains uh and so i think the boom boom specifically will be absolutely tremendous industries despite not having um a lot of uh net per construction because the construction cost is a lot uh and i also think the fertilizer will be much much better because before what used to happen it used to all be on one building uh, the price of fertilizer would get really depressed and it would actually be hard to get the buildings profitable now I think both of these buildings will be profitable you'll just build them in um, you know more appropriate amounts and so I think it will overall work a lot better also you will be able to build fertilizer plants where you have a ton of agriculture and you'll be able to build boom booms where you have a ton of mines and so I think this is more sensible as well uh, and so uh, yeah, uh, and like the boom that the boom booms uh, input goods uh, are mines, and it, the things that ha use them are also mines. I think will make these really, really perform very, very well uh, in in your country uh, in general. Uh, also, I think that generally you're wanting to go mine oriented anyways early on, so there's that. Uh, arms industries, we see a few changes. Uh, one is these PMs got juiced uh, to the like to the this is actually one of the most efficient PMs now for bolt action rifles. Uh, it's probably one of the better uses for oil. It does use oil. Uh, repeating rifles is also very, very solid. Uh, you know, you're getting a lot of uh, net per oil here. You're getting 100 net per oil. And so you will almost certainly want to use bolt action rifles. But what they changed is now all the cannons PMs are inefficient. Uh, this was not the case before. Now they're all inefficient, uh, meaning the output goods prices are less than the input goods because you lose out on small arms and we also got the addition of the recoil mech uh which produces more cannons i don't uh it's going to be if your cannons get really expensive you start swapping up uh cannons pms because it'll be worth it and cannons should just pretty much always be more expensive than uh regular arms now and this should be like a normal equilibrium thing uh but uh I, I it's too it's hard difficult to say too much about this without knowing how useful uh, building a bunch of cannons is because now uh, the the arms are split uh, like if we come and take a look uh, back into the game here uh, for a moment we will see that uh, you know uh, our armies on our armies we can build or yeah we can build specifically artillery and we can also build uh, cavalry and so it might be the case that this influences how much artillery you want to build um, based on the PMs and or if you want to build the artillery, this types of things. But these considerations are beyond the scope of like the analysis of the PM. And also uh, these systems aren't working in 1.5 at the point of making this video. So uh, we'll just keep going on. Just something to keep in mind. The shipyards and the military shipyards we're also split apart. Uh, military shipyards notably doesn't look that efficient. Also very notably, capital ships is negative efficiency. We see this in a couple of spots relative to the previous uh, PM. We see this in a couple of spots uh, where they lose out on efficiency and the, the, the thing that seems to be in common is the 
uh, presence of electricity. So I don't know if there's some reason to want to do this. Generally, electricity doesn't seem like a particularly good good. And so creating demand orders for electricity and suffering an inefficiency in order to do this doesn't seem worth it. And so I think generally you won't use the capital ships PM unless they adjust it or unless it's somehow a requirement to build capital ships which it might be. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to bifurcate and create a new good where it's like ironclad and then capital ships, uh, something like this. Um, arc welding is uh, very efficient though, as is just the regular shipyards are just generally more efficient. Uh, you will want to put these where you have your ports uh, and you will want to put the military shipyards where you have your military boats. And so um, you can create uh, chains and economies of uh, or you can create vertically integrated economies that uh, look a little bit better uh, on the basis of having these two, but these two have been split apart. All right, let's get into the consumer goods here. Uh, Arts Academy, just to really uh, briefly touch on, they basically just 4 uh the inputs and the outputs on art and also increased uh, the amount of people employed in it uh, to, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, they increased the amount that are employed in it to 5,000 and I think they increased the construction costs or maybe they didn't. Uh, let's just jump into game real quick and we can take a quick look. I believe that's the correct consumption construction price, uh, where it is costing uh, significantly less um, than the other ones. So if we take a look, it's not, it's in industry. Arts Academies cost 400, making them one of the cheapest, uh, you know, uh, and so uh, I think Arts Academies art will be like, okay. Um, I haven't taken a super close look at it, but it is interesting. They did edit it. Um, now it is uh, giving, it's not as efficient per population, but now it's like more in line with the levels of employment of everything else, with the exception, of course, of uh, the unhinged, ungodly rice farms, which have double employment that they had before. Uh, but that, let's not talk about those. Um, so textile mills overall received a nerf. Uh, now I'm starting to think uh, you go furniture second. Uh, before it was you go tools first and then textile second. Uh, well, first of all, I think you maybe want to spread out your economy a little bit more and do a little smattering of each instead of trying to pr uh, push economies of scale. Uh, be as a result of the mappy, um, the the local goods prices, because your first textile mill will be a lot more profitable than your eighth furniture manufacturer in any given state. So that's kind of like thing one on the PMs and like pushing economies of scale won't be as good. However, as we discussed earlier, uh, so first of all, you get precision tools and mechanized workshops way earlier than you do elastics. So this is thing one. So you almost have to evaluate this versus this. But secondly, this is creating buy orders. Now, overall, textile mills will create more buy orders, but it will create buy orders for fabric, which I think you generally don't want to be producing too much anyways, and dyes and um, it'll a uh, dyes and silk which you might be importing if you're importing dyes and silk the fact that you're creating buy orders uh is not that useful uh and so i think for a lot of economies where you are not producing dyes and silk and you don't want to produce dyes and silk yourself furniture manufacturing second will make a lot of sense and also on top of that it will allow you these chop chops you to use uh the superior pms that are more efficient uh in terms of overall outputs and then just build the chop chops higher the chop chops are tremendously efficient and so i think that um, you know, it, there's a good chance that furniture, while you will eventually build textile mills out more, uh, going furniture second might be a little bit better. Uh, for groceries, it seems I'm not... I need to take a look, closer look at groceries because I'm not sure exactly uh, my opinion on them right now um, other than like uh, pops do not seem to be consuming them at a rate I would have expected but this might be because they're preferring other replacement goods because the other replacement goods are in higher quantities um, the PM is okay but specifically um, the inputs for you know groceries kind of just jumping into the game real quick the inputs for groceries are exactly what you would want if you are trying to stimulate the price of grain and the price of sugar. Well, what produces grain and sugar and otherwise needs stimulation? What, Whatever could that be? Uh, the OP rice farms. And so um, I think that if, as long as the rice farms remain on nerf, there might be some strategy involved pushing groceries a little bit more so you can push the rice farms and still have them be profitable. Not too aggressively uh, because it's very easy to flood your market with grain uh, because these things are producing twice as fast as they should be. Uh, but uh, there might be some sort of strategy there with uh, groceries. Um, notably, on both the textile mills and the furniture, um, they on these PMs, they have increased uh, the amount 
of uh, luxury goods that are coming out. And so I kind of think luxury good prices might get depressed. Um, I've been kind of noticing that a little bit in my games, if I recall correctly, but I'm not 100% sure if this is happening or like what exactly. But between textile mills going up, furniture manufacturers going up, and porcelain going up, I think one of these is going to get really, really depressed in price. Um, although the economies overall are slowed down, so maybe this isn't a problem, but um, yeah. These are kind of the big ones for the consumer goods. And now we have railways, urban centers, and uh, the amenities, urban amenities, or yeah, just urban centers. So railways, uh, they have across the board kind of increased, decreased uh, significantly the inputs and the outputs of these, uh, as such that the net is generally smaller, if I recall correctly when swapping these PMs over. Uh, they're not that efficient. Now they give less transportation than they used to overall. Um, and you, at the, when you have base railroads, and you're gonna assume you use wooden passenger carriages and on steam trains, you're gonna assume steel passenger. When you unlock railroads, you get experimental trains and um, these give like less than before. So it's hard to get transport. And so it's hard to use the labor saving PMs for transport. And so actually I think in general, building railways is going to be uh, worse. Um, and on top of this, uh, yeah, and so I, I, I mean, I need to take a, like a closer look at these things, but they're not very efficient, right? They're not stimming, simulating the economy. The power plants aren't really that efficient either, especially the oil fired one. You would rather use the oil on other stuff, so you're just stuck at a 30, uh, you know, uh, efficiency per construction, which isn't all that great, uh, but it does allow you to use some really good PMs. Uh, but with the local goods, I'm thinking you uh, kind of want to shun uh, both power plants and railways a little bit. Um, except for the power plants will help you to turn on the lights. And so, um, yeah, but, but both, both of these don't look as good as they did before. Uh, and they're going to be local, so the, the price of railways is going to be way more volatile. Uh, it's either going to be really low or really high if you turn on PMs or something like this. And there's less transportation with which to turn on PMs. Uh, so I don't think you build them uh, like overseas, but this is going to require quite a bit of testing. Uh, so we're just going to like quickly take a look at... Oop, I didn't mean to do that. That's kind of whatever, though. Like in this Germany game... I was like, okay, we want electric rails everywhere. First of all, we set stuff on auto expand, and since it's profitable, it's auto expanding when it hits a positive ca a cash reserve. So we cut that out because uh, it's very tedious as well to have to expand everything by hand. So I was like, oh, I'll just put everything on auto expand. It'll auto expand when it's profitable, except it auto expands when it's profitable and uh, when there is enough infrastructure. And so these things will just auto expand into forever, even if they uh, have low unemployment. But this is like thing one, but like also the amount of railways we need to build in order to turn on all the labor saving PMs is a lot more and so i'm thinking what the strategy is going to be is you generally kind of want to avoid uh using railways for this purpose uh like in like colonized areas uh just like kind of in the abstract um i'm not entirely sure this is going to be the case but they overall seem very depressed the second thing is uh we need to talk about the huge major change to urban centers which is that lighting now gives infrastructure which makes if railroads are less of a source of your infrastructure and we're getting 500 infrastructure from the lighting first of all there might be an interesting strategy where you actually sub these things for the infrastructure rather than building railroads which is interesting uh, or minimizing the amount of railroads you have to build this is perhaps interesting and will also stimulate the amount of services they've also across the board made it so you give let get less services so the services prices don't become anywhere near as depressed um which can positively affect the petite bourgeoisie but overall the decreased quantities of transportation and uh services seem to do a lot for you know allowing the motor industry to actually turn on the automobile pm uh because uh consumption is based on quantity and since uh automobile had replacements in uh Let's see what the replacement goods were. I think in both transportation and uh, uh, the other one in terms of needs. Uh, but if we take a look at needs, we see that, uh, yeah, transportation uh, has both services and transportation can be replace automobiles for free movement. And so decreased quantities of services and transportation, which they've been very significantly decreased by the PMs, uh, do make this happen. And so it's not like 
uh, just the outputs uh, were decreased. The inputs were decreased on these as well, but this overall makes the net uh, like per laborer significantly worse on all the urban center stuff uh, and so they're not as good in that regard but the prices will stay higher which will mean their equilibrium employment will be at a much higher uh, services price uh, and they'll still just reach equilibrium employment they will just require more workers now and so the amount of available employment uh, you will have this should negatively affect uh, throughout your run the amount of employment you have and you should run out of laborers faster uh, I would think um, or is it slower I believe you run out of labor as faster. I maybe have to rethink this. Uh, but overall, the the they're not as efficient, uh, and so the price of services will remain higher. Uh, okay. Uh, now we have uh, urban streetlights, which now you have to evaluate based on the basis they give infrastructure, and so this is going to create interesting dynamics. Um, and it's uh, probably too much to think or unpack, but just understand that uh, these efficiencies have less net than they did before, and they have less input goods and less output. So you're getting less transportation, you're getting less services. It's very significant. It might make it really hard to turn on PMs despite what looks like having a lot of railways. It makes managing local goods actually a huge pain from a gameplay perspective. I assume that they are going to fix it and make it easier, uh, but like trying to turn on PMs only where you have certain things. We tried building power plants everywhere and having them on auto employed, but it's eating so much construction to build these power plants and then build the railways uh, and then have them on electric trains and then uh, like expand out the arable stuff because also railways uh, were one of the ones that got nerfed in terms of the construction cost. They used to be a 450 construction cost and now they're an 800 construction cost. Uh, and so this is another thing to think about. Not only was like the thing nerfed itself, uh, I think, uh, but uh, it was also, uh, you know, uh, it went from, in terms of proportion, it went from being, it's like 80% more to build a railroad now uh, than it used to be, whereas most other things are just 33% more uh, in terms of the construction cost. And so on top of this, I think this is going to mean you're going to be much more conservative about building railroads. However, you're not going to be building railroads for the infrastructure as much anymore because you are going to be getting stuff from urban streetlights, which is, um, you know, fair enough. Another thing is this diesel trains. Uh, let's highlight it here. Uh, so just because I want to talk about the fact that... Um, so diesel trains, uh, as previously a PM you don't really use, uh, the margin per oil you use is not particularly good. However, I have a sneaking suspicion that with diesel trains and modern ports jumping into game, uh, this is going to be a new situation where in places like, you know, Bahrain, uh, when we're on the ports, uh, the modern ports are going to be cheaper here because we have a ton of local oil uh, as a result of the map you pulling the price down. I think it's a good chance that anywhere where you have oil, you will want to use modern ports and diesel trains, and you will just want to use coal everywhere else. Uh, something to this effect, which is interesting. Um, and uh, maybe this is also, like, the fact that you don't want to build as many rails actually makes, uh, you know, the diesel rails okay and decent because uh, now we won't have to construct as much. Like, so we're saving on construction, something to this effect. It's going to give more infrastructure and transportation, um, you know, a decent chunk more. I Well, actually, no, it's not even that much more. So, uh, overall, I think that these buildings have been uh, kind of nerfed, kind of changed. I believe, like, if we take a look, I think this urban center is more employed up than it otherwise would be. Of course, we can switch to arcades. Arcades doesn't seem uh, quite, like, uh, it's just increasing the amount of power used. And so, like, the question, do we want to use arcades more often in places is, like, one to ask ourselves. Because are we, do we want to increase the electricity when the electricity PMs don't look that good? Uh, or electricity generally doesn't look that good. And electricity is a local price. It's, like, uh, finicky. Like, the very often, like, the electricity will be, will not be reaching nice, comfortable equilibriums. It'll just be way higher than it should be, way lower, this type of thing. This does improve uh, places like New York, which have the electricity out output bonus but i mean overall I, I think that you're going to be not stacking railroads everywhere uh not stacking uh you know uh power plants everywhere and instead just focusing it on the really urbanized places uh which is perhaps uh, a little bit more realism and this sort of thing um 
and that's kind of how I think uh, that'll shake out. This will also depress the SOL. Uh, the fact that we have less services and the services are local will perhaps depress SOL in places that aren't heavily urbanized, which is maybe a good thing uh, because overall it was like kind of a little bit high. Uh, but that's been like a, a, a bit of a run through for, you know, all of these. Uh, I mean, I think that the most significant thing, th thing is that construction is uh, a lot more expensive than it used to be. You know, this used to take eight weeks, now it takes 10. Everything across the board is 33% up, except for the rice farms should be, uh, the rice farms are effectively cheaper. Uh, and there's a few things that um, had a more cost increased, uh, you know, that are roughly 80% more expensive uh, on the per construction basis, unless I'm mistaken about where they were before. Uh, but I don't think I am. I know some were 32 weeks before, um, I, like the, the war machines industries and the military or actually military shipyards is also not only are the PMs not that good it's like 800 construction or the PMs are probably similar to the shipyards it's just more construction so it's less worth it uh, it's probably actually exactly what it is like what's the net here uh, even the nets less like the net here is better yeah these are just way better the regular shipyards uh, but you're not building them you're building you're not building military shipyards to stimulate the economy so anyways this has kind of been my thoughts uh, on how we're evaluating PMs now in, as of what, patch 1.5 and also uh, how, uh, you know, things have changed in terms of the PMs preliminarily. I assume they're going to rebalance them a little bit more over the course of 1.5. So um, if there's any major updates, I will probably, um, you know, make something on them. I definitely think the rice is going to be changed. This is the one thing where I'm like, there's no way. Uh, this is just like completely out of line with everything else uh i mean i suppose it's like almost like the chop chops and the rice are similar but the chop chops are just the the flagship pms have been the chop chops sulfur and gold and now well now chop chops are actually way better so maybe the chop chops are out of line too but these rice farms are really out of line they should just cost more construction than they don't it's just like there's no reason to build any other grain other than them even though even to affect local mappy i like i think it's still just like you just crack you just crank rice anyways i hope you guys enjoyed if you did feel free to like comment subscribe if you notice any mistakes because there's a lot of moving parts in like the spreadsheet uh please let me know uh i think i will probably be able to include the spreadsheet down below uh but other than that have a good day and i'll be on my way